uh, candidate for the Nairobi governorship, Johnson Sakaja. Uh, and uh, let's get straight into it. Now, obviously, um, Johnson Sakaja, or Sakaja as you've asked us to call you, yeah. you, uh, you, you've, you've been known for being relatively outspoken in your career. Okay. You don't mince your words. Uh, no. If you don't, if you don't like something, you come out and say it. Yeah. And I guess maybe it's that kind of honesty that people tend to gravitate towards. I would imagine. Uh, it, 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 it also gets me in trouble. It does. Yeah, but yeah. you also say these words with a smile, and you've got the charm and the charisma. Yeah, yeah. Right? And and, and oh, the great like you. and the great smile <laughs> and the great smile. <laughs> Thank you. But 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 uh, charm and charisma couldn't get you out of a little fix you got yourself into uh, in the yes. early days of COVID. Now, as you sat yeah. on a com- the COVID committee uh, for the for the country, yeah. uh, you obviously flouted COVID uh, curfew rules in in a bar uh, and you had to quit the COVID committee uh, and I know you were very apologetic and you yeah. came straight out and said this was really bad um, um, practice uh, yeah practice from me or yeah. from you rather but but tell us a little bit about that experience and, and what you learned from that experience okay um, thanks uh, and, and, and I'm glad we're starting right uh, with, with that it is true um, that was early in the days of COVID I was a chair of the ad hoc committee um, in the Senate um, that was looking at all the areas around COVID, um, from the medical response uh, to the issues of the economy, um, what, how it cushion, you know, those uh, uh, those who needed support from government, um, how we were getting vaccines, all of that. I was in charge of that, and our committee had um, the bird's eye view. I mean, the country of all the aspects um, to do with COVID, um, and yeah, one of uh, the days I think it was a Friday. Um, of course, even during that time, I was allowed to be out past curfew as the senator of the city um, to oversight and to see what you know the police are doing. There were, were cases of harassment before in places like Ibira, ITC. But on that day, I was not oversighting anything. I was just with a group <laughs> of... Oversighting a glass. <laughs> yeah, I was oversighting a glass. <laughs> I was with a group of friends and uh, it went on. Yeah. And of course, um, the reason it got a bit messy was the you know how the cops behaved, You know, I felt... Um, was was wrong, but I was on the wrong, and I apologize. Mm. Um, and I think, look, we're all human; we all make mistakes. I didn't have to quit. I wasn't. There was no pressure to quit. I made the decision because I would not have the moral authority to continue chairing that committee. And people were shocked. They're like, "It's strange. Who quits in this country?" People say, "I'd, I'd rather die than resign." Mm. Uh, there's a famous quote. Um, but I said, "Well, let me take responsibility." Um, because I think the law is made for everybody. There's no one above the law. Um, I hate overlappers. I hate, uh, you know, a special section of society feeling that the law is for other people. Mm. And of course, many people had flouted those rules. Um, in fact, at some point during the hearings, I asked one of the top government officials that, yeah, you guys are taking me through this, but I've been with you at 2 a.m. Um, and so why? <laughs> is, it, is it political? But no excuses. I was on the wrong, right. and I took responsibility. Do you think there was a political element to it? I mean, because it was it was very highly exposed. Of course, there was. Um, but you know, when I speak about that, then it it sounds like I'm making an excuse. Sounds petty. Yeah, because you remember that was around the time we were having the biggest debate in the Senate on revenue, hmm. and I took a stand. Um, at that time, uh, there were some certain counties that were supposed to lose money, um, for others to gain. And Nairobi, which I represent, my work as a senator is to bring resources. Um, was being enticed with a hundred million above what we get for which is 0.6 percent of our revenue for other counties to lose 30 percent of their revenue and so i held ground i said no we can't have a country we can't there's no kenya a and kenya b you know let let let, let each county get what it's been getting and then increasingly then we had you know the most populous counties which is nairobi and i said look i i know numbers i've done numbers nairobi can be the 28th biggest gainer um yet it has the biggest population and ultimately when we 10 times you know uh, 10 tries after instead of getting 100 million more Nairobi got 3.3 billion more and we moved our revenue from 15 billion to 19 billion mm. so it was around that time to say okay we'll intimidate you we'll show you who we are but I mean they caught me I was I was on the wrong but so I took responsibility speaking of Nairobi you are of course uh, vying for gubernatorial uh, for the, the gubernatorial seat yes you have said we want a city of order a city yes. of dignity that people can live with dignity and dignified lives and we can do it what is dignity to you and how will you attain that for Nairobi's people um, yesterday uh, Actually, the day before yesterday, I was I was in Dandora. Nairobi is a city of contrasts and huge inequalities. Um, there are places you pass by, and people are, have become used to garbage um, all over the streets, jumping over sewers, and in two minutes you'll be in Mudaga Country Club, mm-hmm. you know. And there's that huge contrast. People have gotten used to you know terrible housing um, in in many parts of the city. 
where what's separating you and your kids is a curtain and you're paying 6000 for that you know um so we're saying look everybody deserves dignity and nobody there's no nairobian who's less than the other that um, a county government only focuses on the upwardly you know the the more affluent areas in terms of services yet ignores Madare and Dandora and, and Kibera. So, I'm, I'm, you know, so we're saying everybody must have a sense of dignity. Um, and the built environment gives people dignity. Mm. There are places where just painting and, and, and cleaning up a place has reduced crime. Because people feel, look, this is the kind of place I'm living in. I can have you know, clean transport. I can be able to get to town properly. Um, and, and I'm not less of a person when I come into spaces with people who are have better to do so that comes to you know housing and and, and the environment and and, and cleanliness etc mm. but you can only achieve that if we have order that everybody knows these are the rules that this is how the city is going to operate if it's matter to business you're going to operate in within this space um if it's vehicles traffic lights are not a suggestion we need to follow those but, lights. but you have to change a culture as well i know davina has got another question but you you know changing a culture of of what are we talking about decades yeah. of things being done the wrong way exactly yeah. And it's, yeah, sorry. But Honorable Sakaja, let me ask you this. I'm I'm on your Instagram. Great Instagram account, oh, by the way. Thank you. Um so I, I just have you noticed I only follow two people. Yeah. Me and Freed, obviously. <laughs> uh, I follow Jesus. Yes. And my deputy governor. Let me ask you, you. <laughs> yeah. Uh I've seen you in your motorcade. How how many cars do you ro- you, you roll deep in what? Five cars? Your entourage <laughs> is five cars deep. No, okay. my, my entourage uh, has always been just two cars. Okay. But during campaign mm. period now, mm. um, there's a sound vehicle, mm-hmm. like two sound vehicles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's my deputy governor who follows. Let me ask there's you other, this. But my, my has always been just two vehicles. Two, two vehicles with how many people? Like this morning, it was just me coming here. I'm and dropping the kids. I, um, yeah. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, 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 I have a question, though. I really yeah. do. And I've, and I've thought okay. this. Obviously, you can't speak for everyone, but yeah. you are a, 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 a powerful man. Guys who are in these black SUVs, yeah. tinted windows, AC blasting, brilliant watches, t- cruising around the city like they own the place. Yeah, I, I hope you're not describing me. <laughs> I'm, we haven't driven anywhere yet, but okay. I'm just, you know, we all see them. Yeah. And, and traffic lights aren't a suggestion. Politicians. Yes. Do you, the, 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 the group, yeah. do you see what we see? Do you see the uh, disabled mom asking for coins. Yes. Do you see the guy with one hand uh, on uh, Upper Hill? Mm. Do you see the, the, the group of uh, children in uh, wheelchairs outside uh, the roundabout next to Yaya? Like, yeah. do you see the same things? And why are you in those cars rolling five deep? And we're just like, huh? First of all, not only do I see them, I know them. Mm. I know many of them even by name. Uh, most times, um, I drive myself. Most times, including this morning, what I was describing. And when you see what the rest of Nairobians see, I know it feels unfair that just because somebody has a flag, then his appointment is more important. They should have left Ali. Yeah, those are the people who should sort out the traffic problem. So we see that. And that is why, for me, look, I've been a legislator for 10 years. We've made laws. I've, 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 I've had the highest number of bills in Parliament, both in the National Assembly and the Senate. I'm like, look, I'm tired of that. Let me implement. And when I say order, it's order for everyone. The same reason that I was able to, to, to resign and say, look, I broke the law. No one will be above the law. Mm. No one should be above the law. And part of that is actually engaging with the national government, saying let's have traffic management by the county. But, but, and but, everybody will have to follow it. But Davina's question is, 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 is very valid. We, we are living in, and you, you mentioned it, in a society of haves and have-nots. There's really yeah. nothing in the middle anymore. Right? There's nothing. The last 10 years, what we've seen, yeah. that let's say our former president Mwaikibaki tried to 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 build was a middle class yeah. and and to lessen that gap we've seen that gap come back right we, yeah. we have to agree with that it's right? been eroded yeah it has um but 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 i think davina's question is are you as you are going to uh, vying for this position where you will be the boss of the county yeah. essentially and you'll be working for us yes. the people in the county yeah. not uh, just for you with you with us yeah. yeah are you seeing the things that need immediate fixing someone has asked what is your 90 day plan what are you going to do and I'm going to preface that by asking what is the difference in your role as a senator and your role as a governor okay um, let me start with, with, with the difference the difference between the role of a senator and a governor is a senator is a legislator so we make laws and we oversight, you know, the county government in terms of, you know, um, what they're doing right, what they're not doing right. We get resources to the county. And that's why I'm saying I'm proud as senator um, from 15 billion. I've been able to move it to 19. 
and then the county assembly is the one that makes sure you know that they allocate a budget to the county and they do that so so all you do is make laws um about bills on 30 percent procurement for young people women um on uh, pandemic uh, response on disaster management and those are laws but and that's the legislative arm of government now the executive arm of government is the president and his ministers and governors and their ministers their CECs, and those are the ones who actually implement that i can see a problem today um that look this road needs to be fixed or this group of street kids need to be rehabilitated all i can do as senator is talk about it mm-hmm. but a governor has the resources to actually put money and get you know uh, equipment on the on the road and fix it you mm-hmm. know so that's the difference that now you can actually execute that which you've been legislating are you are you worried about if you got in right how mm-hmm. how can you how can you ensure your team are actually going to take the money where it's supposed to be and actually actually make a change one you, you're as good as the team you have number one you know you can have all these uh, nice ideas but you have incompetent people so you see a governor is a leader they are not necessarily a manager they're also saying oh you need a manager no you need a leader because there's nobody with a magic wand that look i'm a doctor if if you look at all the functions of our county healthcare, um roads uh g- environmental management uh, disaster you see, there's no one with all those professional abilities but you need a leader who first has a vision and says look this is where we're going and I get the best in industry mm. in each of those. So the person in charge of health knows their stuff. The person in charge of and, and this is the team you're putting currently putting together that, or have put together. That's the team I'm putting together. Right. I'm go- and, and I'm and I'm inviting Nairobians who are actually interested to serve Take him. the city. Right. Communication to come and, department. Farid, and play Farid's ready. <laughs> Take him for yeah. media comms. So the point I'm making is this. <laughs> yeah. In Nairobi, you must step down the accountability. For you to make sure that what you want is implemented, you need to have first of all, you need to divide Nairobi into four boroughs, which is what I'm gonna do. Nairobi North east west and south okay because the person who is looking at the road or the garbage in kayole cannot be the same person dealing with westlands mm. because that that distance gives lack of accountability so if i call my person in charge of uh, roads and say hey, how comes there's this huge portal i keep passing on Mpaka road I'm like oh sorry governor i was dealing with a problem in south sea right and you go to South Sea, oh, there's this, so you must step it down. So it's almost like the city. Canton system you e- have in Switzerland. Exactly. Everyone so, has that, and, and they have, they're, they're responsible to a leader in that Canton, or exactly. borough, as you put it, yeah. and everyone is responsible to the governor. And so you'll get your services there, right? and there'll be four city managers. The Urban Areas and Cities Act provides for that. No one has done that. Okay. And so that is one of the ways to, to actually step it down. Now, you, you asked me about 90 days. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back and do that in just a few minutes, the 90 okay. days. And obviously, we're going to talk about what's gone wrong yes. in the last decade oh, yeah. for Nairobi ah! County. <laughs> we... Do you have time? (laughs) (laughs) We do have this uh, lovely soundbite from uh, the former governor as he was being handcuffed in Voy. Oh my. Here it is. You ready? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Enough, enough, enough.